The corn is almost ready to harvest. And if you're like me, you know this means one thing. It's nearly spooky season. And if you're looking for some crochet projects, come inside with me and let's take a look at some. You guys, look at my shadow. Look at my shadow, you guys. Do I look like Oogity Boogity from Nightmare Before Christmas? I think so. I've got some orange and some white pumpkins here in the patch that are getting closer to being able to harvest too. So as you can tell, we are starting to get into full harvest season and spooky season as well. So I wanted to come at you today and show you some of my favorite spooky season Halloween inspired projects that I have done along with links to how you can do them too, and also give you an update on my Sweater Make Along 2023 uh, collab I'm doing with some other YouTubers. I will have links to their channels. I think Ella from No Catchy Name is the only other one besides me doing an update today. So um, let's hop right on into it. For last month's video in the Sweater Make Along 2023 Challenge, I did a small cocoon granny square cardigan for a child. And with a couple months left to go on this project, I decided to go ahead and do another one. I recently did a video where I hauled this Hirschner's Worsted Halloween Sparkle Yarn, and I will have a link to that. It is super fun. This is what I have left of one of the skeins right now. And this is the color Witch's Broom. And I really like this. I was immediately drawn to it. I ordered it before it got back ordered. <laughs> so I'm really pleased with it. But then I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. And I decided to go ahead and work on a hexagon cardi in this. And I have done one of these in the past. It was one of my fair projects, but I did it in um, a brown mocha super saver ombre. And um, this I just thought would be really fun to do in Halloween colors. So I have got my two panels um, completed at this point, and I am going to go around them in a single crochet as well to give them a little more stability um, before I add on some extra arm length. Um, I have pretty short arms, but I do need it to be just like a few inches longer. Um, and then I am debating whether or not, I think I might make this cropped, which if you know me at all, seems totally counterproductive to what I like. <laughs> I'm not really into the cropped, um, but, I think this would be cute cropped to maybe just put over um, a black dress, like a normal black dress that I wear to work and everything. And then that way it would still, you would still see kind of like the waistline because I like my waistlines kind of high. And I thought that might be cute. Um, and this obviously isn't something I would probably wear year round, like probably just the, like the week of Halloween or whatever. Um, and so I just thought that might be kind of fun to throw on over uh, a dress. So um, as like you can see, like if I maybe put some ribbing right down here, I think that would be just about right. So I bought two skeins of this and I used one per um, per panel per, per I used one per hexagon just because I didn't know how far they were going to get me and um, you know if I have leftovers I might make like a ear warmer or something out of it um, but I'm just not sure I had kind of wanted to do black ribbing on this um, but if i have enough i might do it out of this i'm still a little bit undecided so a little bit of a cliffhanger for you for next month's sweater make along if you are new to crochet i would recommend doing one of these super easy pumpkins and i've kind of gotten where i just kind of do these my own way but the very first time i did one i did it from a melanie ham tutorial and you basically just make a strip and sew it together stitch up the bottom uh 
fill it with some stuffing and um, cinch it together, you know, bring it down and then make a little stem. Um, I think a lot of the times um, I have just done like half double crochets in the back loop to give it that ribbing. But I have made these in so many different colors, you guys. I have made them in like traditional pumpkin colors. Um, I mean, I guess white is a traditional pumpkin color. You just saw some in my garden, but maybe not the gold sparkles on it. Um, but I have done them in black. I have done them um, in purple. I have done them in like Halloween-y colors. I have also done them in just like totally off the wall, colorful colors. So you can do literally anything you want with these as realistic or unrealistic as you want. How cute would like a black and white stripey, like beetle juicy type of inspired pumpkin. That would be super cute. Or you could do like a really vintage, um, like burnt, burnt orange and black. That would be cute. Um, or you could do like, um, sparkly princess or unicorn or literally anything but these are so easy um, if you're looking for a very quick project i mean like probably done in an hour and you can use scrap yarn and you'll just need some polyfill um, so super easy i will have um, links all in the description box to videos i've done regarding these and also like where I got my inspiration. But this would be my number one Halloween project to get you started in spooky season. If you are looking for a little spooky decor, I absolutely love making these. Um, I think you can either call them a pennant or a banner, uh, but I absolutely love making these. They are just made out of granny squares and they are so easy. Now this one I did improvise quite a bit from the original tutorial that I have watched, which again will be linked in the bottom for the original creator. But with this one, I made them different sizes, um, you know, largest in the middle and going out to smaller and smaller. But I just like the simple plain black. I think that is fun. Just, you know, classy kind of vintage -y. Um, but you could again do this in absolutely anything. I actually have hung this on my desk at work the past couple years just for, you know, a cute little touch for some decor. So the next thing would be these cat hats. Let me go ahead and slip it on for you. All right, these cat hats are so simple to make and so easy. Um, again, everything will be linked. I'm, this is the last time I'm going to say that. Just if you see anything else in this, know that my inspo video and my video will be linked in the bottom. But yes, these cat hats are so easy. Um, it's honestly not all that different than making the pumpkin. You know, you just make a strip and sew it together. And then you do need to sew on the ears. They are, you can't see it on this one, but there are lines right in here. Um, so that this stays flat and doesn't go head shape. So I absolutely love these. These are fun. This was all done with scrap yarn that I had lost the labels to. So let me try on this velvet one real quick. You guys, I had a barrette in my hair and it was making this weird lump right here. So I had to get rid of that. <laughs> but this is one I did for my velvet yarn hack. And that's been a pretty popular video on my channel. So that might be how you found me. But this is um, the double layered, the velvet yarn and the Hirschner's Afghan yarn. So it made it way more easy to work with. There isn't the wormy texture that velvet yarn sometimes gets. And you can make these in literally any size in any color you want. But I just think this is fun, you know, and it's not like overly Halloween-y. So I would feel comfortable um, like heading into town and heading into my Joann's and shopping like this. <laughs> Gotta try to fix my hair after that. That would put a number on it. And then like you saw in the intro, I have this witch hat. And this was a fun one to make. I did accidentally make mine a little big, but I like um, being able to like kind of crumple the, the end of it down a little bit and bring the brim down. Like I just like a little bit more of that, I don't know, spooky, witchy vibe. I just think this is a fun hat. And again, very easy to make. You could definitely whip this up probably in um, a couple hours. It is, 
obviously mine is black yarn. Most people's would probably be black yarn. I got this Super Saver from Walmart. I would definitely recommend using either um, lighted crochet hooks or also like a neck light or even both. I have both of those and I will have links to them down in the description box, but this is two um, strands of Red Heart Metallic put together. And like I said, I would just recommend using some light. Even if you're doing this in broad daylight, I would definitely recommend that. If you have been following my county fair um, projects, you will recognize this scarf that I made that is candy corn inspired. So it is super cuddly and cozy. It is a blue ribbon, so that was kind of a nice, uh, fun treat on that. But this is just um, a nice, cozy fall. It is some yarn I don't know if we'll be able to get anymore. It was from the Dollar Tree. It was um, their premiere. I think it was called Plush, um, and it was around last fall. So this is just fun, but you could make this out of any yarn that's candy corn colored. And I like how these were a little bit more like not so bright candy corn, definitely like a little bit more muted. So super happy with how this turned out. Um, just the size of this is pretty big. So um, I think this took me, you know, a few days of working on it here and there. Um, but it's just granny stitches, so you can crank it out pretty quickly. And um, this is one that was just mine. Um, I just... It, I mean, it's very, very simple. It's not like I made up this stitch. Like anyone can do a granny stitch uh, triangle scarf. And then the next couple things I have are just um, things that you could make really out of any pattern. But if you use um, fall or Halloween yarn, um, it will obviously look like Halloween. This is one of my favorite scarves right here. I made a super thick, chunky granny square scarf right here so i just made my granny squares and then i added a border around the edge and made these really nice um like long thick tassels i just thought this was fun you can layer this over literally anything um, and really just any scarf at all would be nice in halloween colors or you could take this and actually do um, like actually the witch's brew yarn would have been very cute in these granny squares as well. Along with that project, I did use up some other scrap yarn I had. This was, I love this yarn, and it was an orange color that I believe had the word pumpkin in it, if it wasn't just pumpkin. But I did make some fingerless gloves with that project as well. And, oh, I should tell you, this scarf was a discontinued big twist living i believe it was it's the one that was a bulky five but again any yarn doesn't matter um with this i just did my ribbing and this i believe is also in the video so i will just if you want to reference that you can um here in iowa it's like it's hot and then it's cold so i'm going to be honest i did not really get a chance to wear my fingerless gloves at all because it was either too hot or it was cold enough that i actually needed Full gloves. So I love the idea of fingerless gloves, but the practicality where I live just isn't that great. The next couple things I have are um, very easy, and these are just um, some different ear warmers I made. This one right here was some kind of strange yarn that I had gotten in a thrift haul. I'll have that video below for you. And it was actually some Walmart yarn that was like, it wasn't mainstays. It was, it was like one of their clothing brands. I can't remember um, what it was, but it's, it's like a mix of like um, some different natural fiber and some acrylic. And it just has like these gray and kind of burgundy sparkles in it. And to me, this is just like a very, like, I don't know, goth type of or vampire looking type of ear warmer. I'll slip this on real quick. And I would probably pair this more with like a messy bun or um, ponytail instead of my hair down. But again, this is something where, you know, if you have somewhere and you are, um, 
encouraged to wear Halloween attire and that really isn't your speed. Um, you don't want to look silly or outlandish or over the top. Something like this, I think would be a great way to do that. You know, and you can also do um, like this headband right here. I'll slip this on real quick too. And again, I would probably do this with a messy bun, um, but it's just a uh, gray with some silver sparkle. Let me put it on. Yeah, super easy touch again, just to have something, you know, spooky uh, to go along with. Please come back next month and I will have an update on my Hexagon Cardi in Witch's Brew from the Hirschner's Worsted Halloween Sparkle Yarn. I can't wait to show you my progress. Thanks for talking yarn with me.